Hello, it's me and Noah. Noah and some of the rest of the gang here. Today or right now, we're going to we're going to tackle this latch cube. Yes, latch cube. Now, if you're watching this, you probably know what this is, but just to kind of review, it looks deceptively like a 3x3, but it has some interesting characteristics. Um, it can only turn in the direction that the arrows go. So obviously it turns, this uh, has the arrow facing counterclockwise, so it can only turn counterclockwise. I try to turn it clockwise, and it won't do it. So that really takes a, makes a lot of restrictions in terms of what I can or can't do. What's more, if I move it a certain way, like say... I don't know, move this into here, then I'm blocked on both sides because you can't have two, uh, it's, it'll, it's bandaged on, on both sides basically, which is interesting. If you ever run into a situation where you have, uh, say, like uh, this, then you can move both sides because there's no arrows. So it's a very simple bandaging process, but doing it does make for some challenging solves. So we're going to navigate our way through this. Now, to those that have attempted this, I understand that this seems very difficult. So the first step is, number one, don't panic. You're going to be able to get through this. Um, and the second thing that I promise, actually, is that there is no new algorithms with this. Trust me, there isn't. It's all going to be strategy and 3x3 three three algorithms. Well, not exactly. The 3x3 three three algorithms are going to be modified a little bit because we're going to come into a situation where I, I, I might be able to do an R move, but I can't do an R, RI. So let's say I want to do an R move here. I can't do an RI if I ever needed to do that. So my surrogate for an RI is just to do a 3R. So if an RI would move this to here, just go 1, 2, 3, and it moves there anyway. Eventually, that's all the the changes that are going to be needing to make with this. So if I want to do an FI but I can't, then I do a 3F. If I want to do an F but I can't, then I do a 3FI. So that's what it's going to come down to. So scrambling this is kind of a puzzle in and of itself as well. So that's what we're going to start off with. Just kind of move this over here. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe move this here. Move this over here. So you get the picture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to scramble and uh, try to separate as much as possible. I can move this across over here, here. Um, let's get more of a scramble there. Abra Ella Kazam. Okay. So we got it pretty well scrambled. And as such, you know, as you can see, we can't turn this side here because we have two opposing arrows. We can turn this side here because this, this one is okay. So what approach do we use? So now I just kind of open this edge up here or this side up here to be uh, moved. Now in order to solve this puzzle we have to um, do a, a, a couple of preparatory steps. And what I want to do is I actually want to make it to where the arrows are fairly consistent because ultimately what I'm going to want to do is set the cube up to where I can do Rubik's Cube, you know, three by three um, algorithms with slight modifications just based on you know, just based on the fact that uh, I can't make any backwards moves so that I can variate it by instead of doing an RI do a 3R or instead of doing an R doing a 3RI depending on uh, depending on where I've got it so now there may be ways early on to throw algorithms if that's what you're looking for I really didn't want to learn anything new I'm an old dog don't like to learn new tricks. So I'm going to define my first side and my first cross, not based upon the color, but actually based upon the arrows. Because if I can put the arrows in one place, then I can start isolating which side is what and, and where. So I'm actually going to start off with a white side by convention. And I'm going to put as many of the black arrows in the corners, and I'm going to call that my cross. Uh, but I'm going to, there's three different sides that has black arrows. You can see there's green, there's white, and there's also yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the white one as that's here, and I'm also going to do the yellow one, and I'm going to save the green one for later. So really what I'm going to do first is exactly that. Get, as, get all of those white, get all of those black arrows down here in a cross pattern. So you can see here's the white one here, white and black, and this is a, a yellow. So that would be an example of part of the cross over there. So let's see what else we got. Um, this one is not going to stay there, but it's okay to have that for now so I can move this. I can try to find the other white one, which uh, other black and white, which is over here, and I want to move that down just opposite here. Well, it turns out I can move it through here, and again, 
I don't have any algorithms to give you with this, but I, but you can intuitively do it. So that's here, and that's part of the cross over here. So now I'm going to switch over to the yellow side, but still get the cross on the yellow. So these have to end up down here in the proper configuration. So this, I have complete freedom to move because there's no arrows. It just kind of worked out that way. So what I would like to do is move this, say, down to here. So let's move this. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. Let's move this out of the way here. Then I'm going to move this down. Two, three. Move it like that. And then just move this down. And I can do it through here. One, two, three. So I've got this one down here. This one I'm going to want to put back. All right, so that's what I've got so far. This isn't exactly in the cross position, but we can easily get that there. And I'm going to put this, this and have to bring it down here. And again, it's really just a matter of... Um, plugging and chugging, doing as best we can. So I gotta get this out of the way. Can't do it through this side, so why don't we come, I can move it here, so I'm gonna come over here. This is in the way, I could move this out, if I so wanted, by bringing that here, so now this can consistently move. So let's just bat this out of the way here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna bring it down, so I would wanna say, turn it over here. So, I'll just move a non-arrowed one here. Got to do the same thing here somehow, but this is in the way. So why don't I move this up like so. Then I can bat this like this, and now I can just move this. Move this up, which moves that back down, which is good. Now once I've done that, <clears throat> I want to be very careful to get this back down here in the position that it's in, which I can like so. So that's down here, and that's pretty good. So I just had to do a little bit of shuffling around. So I can move this with perfect freedom, like here, and now I wanna to try to move this in. And this will come down here so that it's so that this orange, this yellow is opposite over here. And this has all arrows pointing the right way. Okay, now, that was not as complicated as you think it might be. It was all very intuitive, no need for algorithms. And if there are algorithms, to be honest with you, I don't know of them, because I don't have them memorized. So this cross is in here, this is in here. As you can see, these two are not. So although these are down here, I would like them to be switched. So I can move this up here, one, two. Now it's a matter of just moving this, one, two. And now we're gonna move this down if we can, one, two. So this has uh, now been exchanged. Now this has to come back. So I can go one, two. Find a way to bring this down, can I? Yeah, one, two. So the overall effect is I got what I've now defined as my cross. So that's kind of a funny way of looking at the side where I'm doing it purely based on getting the black arrows and having my cross over here. So, so far so good. That wasn't too bad, I think we can all handle that. Now the next step, generally speaking, is of course we get the corners. But I have to do another preparatory step that has to do with these black arrows. What I wanna do is I wanna deal with the rest of the black arrows, which in this case come from the green side. So what I want to do before I get the corners down here is to put in the green edges. Now this is where things may get a little bit complicated. This green edge is by coincidence already there, or is it? Um, ultimately, you can see that I'm going to want to be moving this down to here. So this is actually correct because this arrow is pointing down. So what happens, or what's going to happen eventually, is although I'm going to put the green edges here, this is going to be white, and this one is going to be, it's going to be black. I want to make it to where this is going to point to where this is ultimately going to go. So that's why this needs to be here. So I need to put the green and black one here, because the green and black one which is this piece here, is going to end up with the green with the arrow pointing up, black is here, which will come into this side. So kind of think about what I said, because that's going to be the reasoning, and now we have to find a way to do exactly that. I've got to find a way to put this down over here. Okay, what I just did is I moved that out just to make it a little harder so that you can see what we may have to deal with. So the first step in doing this, what you want to do is you want to get all of the white arrows out of this green side, uh, out of this green, uh, yeah, this green face over here. The reason for that is you want to have freedom to move this in a specific direction, and you want to free this side up as well. And while you're doing that, you want to put this down to where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and take this and put this here because uh, that's going to be up. Um, so right now we can't really do a lot of moving with this. Uh, at all. 
So we're going to see if maybe we can coax it into coming into this um, position over here. So we'll, um, we'll go ahead and see if we can't get this, uh, um, uh, get this out of the way. I notice this green side over here. So one, two. So I put this over here. Now I can move this around as much as I want. Now I got to be careful because this was the bottom cross and you're going to try to protect that as much as you can. So I'm just going to move this again over here so I've got all these in line. Again, this is not a specific strategy. Well, this is a specific strategy for this particular um, scenario, but I invite you to work it out. So now I'm going to move this over here. And upon doing that, I can now move this into place. And I've got complete freedom to move that over here. So you can see this is, this is where it needs to be. This um, has been taken out, so I'm going to want to put that in. Let's bring this down so that we kind of um, protect that. Okay, so how am I going to put this in conjunction here? Move this, say, over here, bearing in mind that this is here. And I'm going to move this like this to get, to get the white one out. Now I'm going to very carefully move this yellow one back in. Um, now once I've done that, what I want to do is move this up so that this is kind of where I want it to be. Now I want to move this to the side. Now I'm free to move this back down, and now I can move this to the side here. All right, so this is really just a matter of positioning. So this is in, this is still in, and I move this in here. Again, I don't have an algorithm to give you, but I, uh, this is the hardest part here, just the positioning. Now this needs to come in over here. So how am I gonna do that? Well, when my criteria is met, I don't have any white ones over here. This is not the correct green ones, no white um, circles anyway. So what can we do to move things right? Well, first off, I'm not going to be able to move the side at all as long as these guys are here. So what I could do is, so I might try to move as many of these empty circles in as much as possible. So I'm going to go one, two, three, just to move this in. And now in terms of this guy over here, paying very close attention to what I'm doing, I'm just going to move this, this over to here, but I have to go one, two, three. I got to remember exactly what I did because now I can isolate this and move this this way over here so that I'm close to where I want to be. Now let's move everything back. I know that this is supposed to come back down to here and I can turn it like so. You know this needs to come back down to here. So this comes back over here. So I was able to get the cross back and, and make this move. Now of course I still put some white ones over here, but at least I moved it from here to here. Now this just has to come down here. So what's a good way of doing that? Well, this, this can turn here. So why don't I turn this down so that this is here. Now I can turn this down like so. That way I can move this back. Can I? Well, I can, but I can't move it this way, but that's okay. I can just move it three times here instead of once here, once clockwise, uh, I'm sorry, counterclockwise, I can turn it three times uh, clockwise. One, two, three. And then make my turn. I'd like to turn it back, but I can't, so I'm just going to turn it three times here. Okay, so you can watch that carefully, but basically I just had a goal and I winded my way through to get that goal. No need for algorithms. If you want to do this fast, maybe I can uh, um, generate some. But anyway, I've got my cross here. This is here. This is here, this is here, this is here, and I've got the proper green ones in the proper place. By that, I mean this green and white, the arrow's pointing down so that this white can end up in this center, and this green is facing up so that this black can eventually end up in this black center. That was actually probably the harder part, and you can see it just took a lot of positioning. But again, the strategy is just get all the white ones away from here, put it here, and then you can construct and deconstruct things. So what I would do now, well the next step to do now is now we're going to put in our corners, these two corners. And I'm going to start off with my green one. So this corner that's down here is going to match uh, this. So this is going to be yellow, green, and black. And that's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, right over here I've got this one. This is the green, white, and yellow. So maybe I can work on putting that over here because that's, that's where that's supposed to be. The yellow, green, and black is actually over here. So let's try this first. So my technique for this is I want to roll it in. Now, believe it or not, by doing this, I've actually created sides that I can work with. All of my sides here have arrows going in a consistent direction, and that's going to be conserved with what I'm going to do. So I've really simplified uh, the solution for this. 
But the technique that I'm going to do is I'm going to find one on top here. If it's not, I've got to place it on top. Then I'm going to move it away from the centers that I just created. And what that's going to entail is I'm not going to be able to move it this way. I have to take this and move it over here. So let's go one, two, so that this is over here. And now this has to come over here too, so we'll go one, two. So what I've done is I've put these two in association with each other, and now it's just a matter of rolling it in. Now, most of the time what you're gonna end up with is you're gonna end up with a circle which can have you go both ways, which, which will be good. And now it's just gonna be a matter of rolling it in, um, the way that you would roll in any um, situation with a, with a three by three. But I'm gonna wanna make sure that this green is gonna match with this green over here. So basically roll this up, and then move it across. As you can see, it's not lined up, and that's okay. Just move it further, because at least we rolled it into a different position. And now I can't move this down, so I just have to roll it this way three times. One, two, three, that brings that back down here. So then I put this piece back into position over here, and just roll it again. Turn, turn, not quite where it needs to be, so extend it back, one, two, three. Put this back over here, one, two, Actually, put it over here, and I'll try to roll it in again. Turn, turn. You can see green is with green, orange is with orange, so we're right where we need to be. Can't, oh, in this case, I can turn it back down. So this is where it needs to be, so let's put this back with a green side. I have to turn it this way, bang. So then the result of that is that I've got the white, green, and yellow where I want it. Let's practice that again with this side here. I'm looking for the green, yellow, and black which we saw somewhere down here. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is move this up, which shouldn't be a problem. Again, I'm not gonna be dealing with black arrows here. It's all gonna be white or nothing at all. So let's just move this up, across, and down. So we're good. So the same kind of thing. This will move back over here. So one, two, three. And again, I'm doing this because I wanna move it away from these sides. I wanna isolate it. So this is gonna to have to move here, bang, bang, bang. So this and this are lined up. And then we do our little rolling trick. This will have to match up with, with, uh, with the green, match the yellow, and all that good stuff. So move it up, turn it. Now this is actually what I want because this green is facing up. So I turn this down. You can see this is lined up, this is lined up. It is easy to get confused with this, so be forewarned. But you just have to keep your eyes on the prize of what you're doing. Turn this back. This is in, this is in, this is in. So we have these edges in. Next step is we put these edges in. So we turn over to here with the blue side. Again, don't get screwed up. These are all fine. But now we gotta put the blue in. Now here's the good news. The hardest part is done. Uh, all of our arrows are where I need them to be. So this is just a matter of rolling it in old school. So for these next two, what we're gonna wanna do is uh, first off, ignore the reds. That's gonna be, um, that's not gonna be until up here. But in terms of the blue, this is gonna be, since we're defining this as kind of the blackish sort of side, we're gonna be looking for the yellow, black, and blue. So yellow, black, and blue, which appears to be right over here. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll it in there. Um, just roll it in old school. So turn, turn, and turn. So this is actually in place over here. For this one, this is gonna be, and again, it's, it's gonna be a little difficult to visualize, but this is gonna be yellow, blue, and white. Go by this, not, not by this. This is gonna be rolled in later. So I'm gonna look for the yellow, blue, and uh, white, and that's right up over here. So move this into position, and we literally just roll it in. Roll it in until uh, yellow is with yellow. So turn it up, turn it here. It's not in, obviously, so keep, keep it going. Two, three, we bring it back. And then just, uh, now this rolls into here, turn, turn. This is actually where it needs to be. I can't turn it down, so one, two, three, and there it is. So this is an example of our first layer solved, okay? So um, our blues, yellows, and these blacks are here, here, and here. Okay.